today. Uh, we are welcoming former Labour MP John Ryan visiting us at our Olay Web TV studio. Uh, she has been uh, selected by the Labour, uh, Labour Party again to uh, win back her uh, position as an MP at Enfield North. And obviously she will be talking to us uh, about the new uh, changes that she wants to bring into the area and uh, how is she also very much interested to, to keep her, uh, uh, I mean, to keep in touch with our community, Turkish-speaking uh, uh, electorate in Enfield North. And she'll be talking about the policies that she is excited to tell us that she wants to bring into the area. Uh, well, I'm delighted to be invited today to, um, to undertake this interview. Um, and I'm very excited, looking forward to the election. It's very close now on May the 7th, so um, you know, campaigning is really gaining pace. But I'm really pleased to be here because, you know, Enfield is a very diverse community now, and we've got um, a big and a fast growing Turkish speaking community, and that's Turkish Cypriots and Turkish mainland, Alavi, Kurdish. Yes. It's a big mix. And if you're a member of parliament for an area, your job is to represent all communities and to serve those communities um, and to be the voice of those communities. And that's what I always tried to do as the member of parliament and that's what I seek to do again. Um, lots of communities often feel that their hopes and ambitions, their issues, that their community's needs are not addressed. Yes. I think we have to be really conscious of the fact that amongst all these different communities, you can't just treat everybody as one group. Mm -hmm. You've got to get to know each different group and their needs. So we have one big community made up of lots of little communities. Yes. And one of the things I like best about being a member of parliament is working with the people that you represent, working with the communities, um, and working with the Turkish-speaking communities has always been a really positive experience for me. And so my ambition, if I'm fortunate enough to be re-elected um, and become the Member of Parliament again for Enfield North, is to make sure that I am the voice for all of those communities, mm -hmm. that I may not be Turkish or Turkish Cypriot, I may not be Alavi or Kurdish, I uh, may not be um, Bangladeshi or Somali, Nigerian, Ghanaian or white British. Well I am white British but I am of those communities because I will be their voice. Uh, I understand you have been in the position before and obviously from the experiences you have had in the past do you feel, do you think uh, you will be using those experiences uh, to even improve better and on what policies do you think uh, you will be uh, bringing f fresh breath of air into the area if you can talk about the policies that you have in mind that yeah. you think it will enhance the area for the better you can talk us I think issues. the advantage of having been the member of parliament before is that I know the communities um, and I know the area very well and I live in Enfield and I've lived in Enfield for many years. My family live in Enfield, so I am part of that community. And so I know what the issues on the ground are. So the idea, you know, for me is that I can hit the ground running. I know what I need to do, and I know how to do it. Um, I think we've got, I've got five very key policy areas okay. for the community. Um, health, education, housing, um, young people, business, and I think they're the five areas where there are some real, real issues. And of course, education and young people, yes. it, it overlaps. Mm -hmm. Let me say about the um, Turkish-speaking community, there are a couple of things that um, you can recognise um, that are very important in describing those communities. First of all, I'd say they are very family orientated, very, very keen 
that their children can get on in life and do well. Very keen that their children have the opportunities to get a good education, to go to university, get a good job. So I think the things I want to do are um, address the issues that we see in education. Mm -hmm. In Enfield now, we've got increasingly a high number of uh, five, six and seven year olds in classes of over 30. That makes it very, very hard for the teacher mm -hmm. to really uh, give the appropriate amount of attention to each child so that they can achieve what they're capable of. You know, if you go to private schools, very few of them will have classes over 30, mm -hmm. um, if any. And I'll bet you um, that the children in those private schools, they, we know they have got a better chance of doing well in smaller classes. So if it's good enough in the private sector, mm -hmm. then it's good enough for us and nothing less. There should not be any five, six and seven year olds in classes over 30. They need to get the best start in their education. So I want to uh, make sure I can work with the local authority and the local schools and the local communities to do something about that problem because it's becoming a real issue in mm -hmm. Enfield. We've also um, made a commitment that we will have, all our schools will have highly qualified teachers. At the moment, um, the current government has allowed a situation where uh, unqualified teachers can work in our schools, particularly in the free schools. I don't think that's right. I want properly qualified teachers teaching the young people and the children of Enfield. I think that's really important. And you were talking earlier about uh, jobs for young people in the area. Mm. Over, Could you explain yeah. that to us? Over the last um, five years, we've seen a drop in the number of apprenticeships. That's not in, good. In Enfield? In Enfield and um, across the country. Okay. Uh, for certainly the 16 to 20 year olds, there's okay. been a drop in those apprenticeships. And what can you do in Enfield to well, help that Well, what we're saying is a any <coughs> company, for us to start with, any company that gets a government contract okay. anywhere in the country, um, but any company that gets a government contract must create apprenticeships okay. to alongside it. So we've got a little bit of power there sure. to make that happen. If they want the contract, then they've got to create some okay. apprenticeships. Okay. Um, also, we're saying any young person who's been out of work for a year, and in just Enfield North, there's over 355 young people, 16 to 20 year olds, out of work. Mm. So we, we don't want to be exploiting young people, we want to give them real mm. experience of work. So you'll be fighting for all this? I will be making sure that Enfield gets its fair share of all these opportunities, because in the last five years, you know, Enfield has really suffered. You know, we've seen our hospital downgraded, our A&E &E maternity go, we've seen our classrooms become overcrowded, we've seen young people out of work, we've seen people really suffering in um, the cost of living crisis, where wages are flatlining but prices have gone up. I also understand that you are very much interested uh, in helping small businesses as far as uh, or the parties uh, uh, going to press for uh, banks to allow more uh, credit yeah, to yeah. small businesses. Could you yeah. give us a bit more on that yeah. please? And I think this will be um, of great benefit to the um, Turkish and Turkish Cypriot communities. Small businesses. Yeah. Because they're very, you know, a lot of immigrant communities um, tend to have much higher levels of um, self-employed or small, medium-sized businesses. So those small and medium-sized businesses are the backbone of any sure. economy and they create a lot of jobs. And we really need to be supporting and encouraging mm -hmm. them. So what we're saying is um, we will reduce the business rate mm -hmm. and we will then the following year freeze the business rate so it doesn't just go straight back up the next year. Yes. In the first year you were In the first year, year they're going to, we're going to reduce the business rate and in the okay. second year we're going to freeze, freeze it. it. Okay. So I think that will be a real help and boost sure. for all those businesses. 
We're also going to freeze energy prices for 18 months whilst we reset, recalibrate the market. Um, and we're going to freeze them so they can go down, but they can't go up. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, business rates, energy prices, these are a big part of the overheads for any small and medium-sized business. So I think that will make a real difference. So you'll have active government support for business from Labour. And the other thing that I think is very important is we are really going to act to put much more pressure on the banks to lend to small and medium-sized businesses because we know they have had such a difficult time in the last five years. Despite everything the banks say, most of them have been very unhelpful when it comes to lending to small and medium-sized businesses. And we really have to act to be the voice of those small and medium-sized businesses. And I will be talking to the banks that businesses in my area, my constituency, deal with, but nationally, Labour will be doing that as well. I think that's crucially important. When we look up and down, say, the Hartford Road that runs through Eastern Enfield, what we see you know, is lots and lots of um, Turkish and Turkish Cypriot businesses, and we should celebrate that, because frankly, if they weren't there, we'd have lots and lots of empty shops and, and empty point. businesses and higher levels of unemployment. Yes. And we need to be there on the front line with these businesses giving them support, encouraging them, and really understanding what their needs are and the contribution they make to our local economy. And, I, you know, we underestimate that. I think they make a fantastic contribution to the local economy. And it means our high streets are vibrant and lively and not full of empty shops. I think that really matters, really matters. And I, I, we want to be, I want to be really actively involved with those businesses. Basically you're telling to them, uh, to our community as well, that you will fight for them and for their families. I will absolutely fight for them and I will fight and fight and fight for them. I, I, <laughs> I am a fighter and I think, you know, that's what people need nowadays. They need to, they need for us as their representatives to understand it's our job to reach out to them, to engage them okay. in this process Great. and to be their voice and to fight for their needs. I think one of the other things we really, really need to have a strong voice on, for Enfield in particular, um, is housing. Mm. We have seen the lowest levels of house building since the 1920s. Now, this is a real problem, particularly in Enfield, and I know it's a big problem in Edmonton and our neighbouring boroughs. Um, what people say to me on the doorstep and what the communities say to me when I visit the community centres is our kids growing up, set up home, want to have a family, can't afford to live near us. Mm -hmm. we, we are being, it, this is breaking up communities and breaking up extended families. Thank you very much for touching to so many important points and issues and I agree with you on the issues that you have mentioned. I hope that you're successful, become an MP and uh, fight for everyone in the area for the issues that you've just mentioned. Thank you and, and thank you for this opportunity to talk to the community because yes. you know that is so important that we find all the different means of reaching people. Yes. Yes. We'll, really we'll try is. to do our best to get your message heard. Thank you. you. Can be sure of that. Thank you.